Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to open and close the door for only when the player is looking at it. So I'll show you what this is going to look like now. So we go in, we're not looking at the door, we can't open it. But if we look at it, the door will open. And then we look again, we're not looking, sorry, we can't close it. We look at it again, and then we can then close it. As you can see, these red lines are here just for testing. These won't be here in the finished product. But this is what we're going to make. So I'll delete it all and then show you how we do this. So our first step is going to be to create an interaction key. So we go to edit, project settings, and then when it loads, if we scroll down to input, on the left over here, and go to action mappings, if we hit plus, we can then call this interact or anything that you like. And again, set this key to anything you like. Well, I'm going to set mine to E, but it's going to be F, left click, anything you like. This is just so that we can then create bindings later on if we want, and we can set this to different buttons for different consoles or anything along those lines. And again, this cannot be interact, this can be like open door or something like that. But once you've done that, you can close that and open up our character blueprint. So for me, that's third person BP, blueprints, third person character. But for you, this could be first, third, or anything you've named it. So once you've done that, all we want to do is just find some space down here, like so. And if we right click and search for interact, or whatever you just named our action mapping, we can then get that here. And then one thing we'll do as well is up in the top right here, we have consume input. We just untick that. This means that we can use this interact button in other blueprints at the same time. So we'll just compile and save that. So now we have that like that. And we're also just gonna quickly create our door blueprint as well. So do this wherever you like, but I'm gonna right click here, go to blueprint class, create an actor. And I'm gonna call this door BP. Now we're just gonna quickly set this up so that we can reference it in the other code we're about to do. So up in the top left here, once you've opened that, we go to add component. I'm just going to add a static mesh here, and I'll call this door. And over on the right here, we can get our static mesh and put in our door that we have. I'm using the one in the start content, but you can use whichever one you like. So then we're going to add another component, and this one is going to be a box collision, like so. And then I'll just put this in the middle here and scale it up to how big I want it. So this box collision is where the player is going to need to be standing to be able to open the door. So they need to be in this box collision and be looking at the door to be able to open it. So make this as big as you would like, but I think that's good for me. And so for the moment, I'll leave it as that and go back to our character blueprint up here. Now what we're gonna do is off of pressed. So when we first press our E key or interaction key, we're gonna get a line trace by channel, which is essentially gonna be just drawing a line in front of the player. And then the start and the end is how we're gonna control where this line goes. So to do that, we're gonna right click, get, actor location so this is going to get the location of the player and that is going to be the start of our line like so and for the end what we want to do is get our camera so i'm doing this in first person but it will work the same you just drag and drop your camera in here it just works better with the first person as obviously that is where the camera is looking and where the player is looking but so again just drag and drop your camera reference in there and we're going to get forward vector so that it is going directly in front of the player's camera like so Return value, we want to get a multiply, so vector times a float. This float here is how far in front of the player you want the line to go. So I'm going to set this to about 400, but mess about with this to get it perfect for you. This is just the length of the line. And then we'll come out of the get X location up here again, get an addition, so vector plus a vector, and put this multiply in the bottom value there. And the return value of that addition is going to the end like so. So it should look a little something like this. And then what we want to do here is the line trace by channel. We'll keep all these the same, but the draw debug type, I'm gonna to change to the duration, which is essentially the red line we saw. This is good for testing so we can see where the line is going. But if you do not want the red line anymore after you finish this, change this from for duration to none like so. And then after this line trace by channel, we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug that in there, the return value will go in the condition like that. So if we are hitting something, and then we want to see what we're hitting, so the out hit, we're going to break hit result. So drag that out, break hit result like so. And now we want this to only work when we're looking at the door and if this line trace hits the door. So to do that, we'll come out of the hit actor and we're going to cast to our door BP that we just made like so. Plug that into true, so if we do hit an object and it's the door, then it's going to fire off what we want. And then there's one more thing we need to do after this. So if we go back to the door BP, the variables in the bottom left, if we hit plus variable and just create a boolean called is looking at door or anything along those lines that you want. Again, make sure it's a boolean and have it as false by default. Go back to the third person character and as door BP, we want to set 
is looking at door plug that in there like so and we want to set this to true so the player is looking at the door and now this is this code here done so we can just select that hit C to comment this and I'm gonna call it check to see if player is looking at the door BP like so so obviously you can name it something more catchy if you'd like but that works for me and you can also put this into a function or a macro if you like as well but that's going to work for me so that is what we need to do in the character blueprint so we can just compile save and close that like so and obviously go back to the door bp that we made earlier now i'm going to go over to the event graph of this over here i'm going to delete event actor begin overlap and event tick and off of event begin play i'm going to come out and get an enable input and this is just going to allow us to actually use our e or interact button in this blueprint the player controller will obviously be get player controller or the player controller that you have for your character but by default it will normally be get player controller unless you've changed it so i'm going to again comment this i'll just call this enable use of interact key like so it's always good to comment your stuff so you know what it is and what it does so then further down here we're just going to scroll down a bit right click and get our interact key once again and then we're just going to hold down d left click get a delay plug then to press like so and we can leave it at 0.2 if you'd like just something very quick so that it has a chance to actually set the boolean to true in our character blueprint and then we'll fire off this code this just means you don't have to press the button twice for it to work and then we're going to right click on our box collision up here in the components of the top left that we made earlier we're going to right click again and we're obviously going to right click add event add on component begin overlap and then right click again add event add on component end overlap and then we'll come out the other actor and we're going to cast to our third person character or just your player character and we'll do that on both of these and this is so that it is only going to be registering this if it is our character which overlaps with this box collision like so now what we want to do is out of this delay we're going to hold down b left click and get a branch the condition of this is going to be is looking at door so plug that in there like so and after this once again we're going to actually set this off of true we're going to set the is looking at door to false so that the player is no longer looking at the door unless they try to do this again and then we're going to hold down g left click and get a gate this will be going into the enter of the gate then the begin overlap from the cast here will go into open and the end overlap cast will go into close so what this is doing is if we are in the box collision and we press e while we are looking at the door it is going to fire off the code after this which is going to be opening the door so this is what this does so i'll comment this checks if we are close enough checks if we are looking at the door like so and then out of the gate like i said this is where we want to open the door so i'm going to hold down b and left click again plug that into the exit i'm going to get this branch with the condition of a new boolean we're going to create called is door closed like so make sure that is a boolean by default we want this to be true so compile and tick this default value to true like so and we'll plug that as the condition in here and the reason we're doing this is because if we use a flip-flop which toggles that might then close the door or open the door again when we want to close it because we might press it when we're not looking at the door so then out of the true what we want to do is we want to come out of it and add a timeline as we're going to be using timelines to open and close the door this one i'm going to call door open like so and it's not going to go into play it's going to go from play from start so that we make sure we always play it from the start of the timeline animation that we want and then we're going to double click to open this we're going to add a float track on the top left here i'm going to call this open slash close as we're going to be using the same one for closing as well the length is how long you want this animation to be so how long you want it to take to open the door i'm going to set this to two seconds like so we'll right click on the graph here add a keyframe time zero value zero so this is the very start add another one so right click add keyframe time two so this is at the end of your timeline value one so it's going from the very beginning to the very end of your timeline like so save and then you can just close that timeline like that now you can see we have this float track here so what we're going to do is we're going to right click and get a lerp just a normal lerp here under float the alpha is going to be the float track that we just made in this door timeline here so it's going to be getting the position between those two values and keyframes that we just put in and then we want to create another two new variables for a and b so we can do that we hit plus variable and i'm going to call this one open angle like so make this a float and then i'll get another variable call this close angle and this should be a float by default if, but if not make it a float as well 
and we can compile, we can change these default values. The close angle I want to keep at zero as that's what it is now. So you can see this is zero degrees. And then the open, you're just gonna move this and see where you want the door to be open. I want it to be minus 100 degrees or just 100 degrees. So obviously you see which one you want, which value that you want this to be at, but I'm gonna put in 100. So you just select the open angle and input 100 in there like so. So you compile and save that. And now what we're gonna do is actually move the door. So we'll get a reference to our door static mesh from up there. So from the top left, drag and drop that in. We'll come out of this and we'll set the relative rotation like so. Plug that into update. So every time this timeline updates, it's gonna be setting the rotation of our door. Now we want to only move this on the Z axis, so only rotate it on the Z. So we'll right click the new rotation and split structure pin, put the return value from the LERP into the new rotation of the Z like that. Now for the A and B of the LERP, we want to get our open and close angles we just made. So close is gonna go in the A, open will go in the B as we want it to move from open to closed like that. So that is the opening done and also actually off of finished, we want to set is door closed, it's like that. We want to set this to false like it is already. So the door is open. So what it's gonna do is if the door is closed, we're gonna play a timeline to open this door. So it's gonna get the position on the timeline between close and open angles and set the rotation of the door like that. Now to actually close it again, what we can do is just control C. So select all that, control C to copy it, control V to paste it down here. Come out of false of this first branch here of is door closed, plug that into reverse from end. So we're gonna be using this same timeline, but instead of playing it, we're gonna be reversing it. So we're doing the opposite of opening, so closing. And then the only thing we want to change is this set is door closed here. We want to tick that to true instead of false. But other than that, this is all the same. So this all works good. So what I'm gonna do is comment this part and call it open door, and then comment this part and call it closed door like that. So this should now work perfectly. If we compile, save, minimize, and to test this, we actually need to put it in first as well though. So we can now do this. If we walk over to it, we're pressing E, nothing happens. But as you see, if we press E, nothing's actually happening. We're not actually getting the line trace. And that's because as you may remember in the third person character blueprint here, we unticked consume input. We need to make sure we also do that on this one here. So untick consume input on this input action in the door BP as well. So now if we try this again, we press E, you can see we're getting these red lines, which is the line trace. So if over by the door, press E, nothing happens. If we look at the door, it is now opening when we press E. We press E again, nothing happens, but if we look at the door and press E, it's gonna be closing like that. So now we can open and close the door by pressing E like so. And that works perfectly. And now again, if you wanna get rid of these red lines, as you probably will in your actual game, what we can do is open up our third person character again, go to the line trace by channel, change draw debug type from for duration to none, meaning there won't be any red lines anymore. So we can go up to it, press E, we don't have the red line, but we can open the door. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so that if we press E, we're not gonna be doing anything, but if we press E while we're looking at the door and we are close enough to it, it is gonna open the door like so, and also close it as well. So we can open and close the door by simply looking at it and being close enough, but not when we aren't looking at it. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.